don't even, you know, seek out the people that we would otherwise be able to if we had the manpower to do it. That's heartbreaking to hear that this stuff's so prevalent that yeah. it's you're kind of playing defense to the point where you don't have time to go on offense. That's that's hard. I had no idea. Yeah. That, I had no idea it was that widespread. It is. It is. And, you know, it, it's everywhere in society. Um, you know, it doesn't escape, you know, any socioeconomic status or, or you know, a, a type of person, you know, whether you, whatever you were professionally or not, you know, just people from all walks of life have a proclivity for that at times. And, you know, we we come across them because they're brought to our attention. We don't even have to, you know, go fishing for them, unfortunately. Wow. Wow. And it's, I'd imagine teachers report things and neighbors report things, and that's that's how it starts coming down the pike? Yes, that, and it's just technology itself. Right. Um, kind of brings it to us. Right. So if you... you know, had, without, without exposing too much of, of, of how we how we do the things we do. Yeah. I would imagine the development of this dark web thing is a horror show for you guys. That that sounds like a real... I've never messed around on that dark web, but that sounds like a place where bad things happen. Yeah, you know, um, we really don't... We don't get anything from there because I guess it tends to be where the, the real bad people, uh, you know, do their things. So they're not prone to report each other. Um, so our stuff comes from just you know, run-of-the-mill stuff that's filtered out through email or, you know, somebody finds something and reports it or somebody stumbles across it uh, mm-hmm. and reports it or maybe a child pornography website gets taken down and then, you know, the investigation reveals credit card and bank account information and then that gets, you know, dispersed out to the jurisdictions where where it can be investigated for yeah. prosecuted. Yeah, I, can yeah. Read it. I mean... That is, uh, I can't, that's, uh, I don't even know what to say. You don't even know what to say. And how do you let it go? You said, like, you need a hobby. You need to, you need to have, that. like, what, I would imagine, do you get into, like, the most hardcore hobbies when you're in the thick of that 20 years ago? Or you, like, the most hardcore martial arts you can find? Like, um, yeah, I guess some people do. For me, I kind of, uh, I kind of discovered running, which I, it's going to sound strange, especially as I delve deeper into this uh, topic. I hate running. Um, and probably, t- I guess it was about 10 years ago, one of the guys in the office was doing a benefit 5K run. And I said, oh, I'll, I'll run it with you. So I started running just intermittently here and there. And then I decided I was going to you know, try a, a half marathon. It was like my ultimate goal. So I did that. And then... Um, maybe the next year one of the guys in the office said he was going to do the marathon and he needed a training partner so I decided to do that and then just from there I, I got talked into doing um, ultra marathons <laughs> so uh, you know Hold on. <laughs> this comes from a guy you started it by saying you hate running and now you're talking about ultra marathons which I, I feel like are, aren't those like 200 mile long races through deserts and stuff they are. I've never done a two hundred mile race. I've done hundred mile race. <laughs> oh my God. Um, so yeah, and I and I hate it. <laughs> it's funny because I, I truly do not enjoy running. I, there's never a point when I go out for a run and, and I'm thinking to myself, "This is fantastic." <laughs> I just I hate it, and I just push through it for the benefits, you know, mentally and physically. I just go about it and push through it, and it, it lets you take. You know, when you're alone with your thoughts, it helps you work through some of the stuff that you deal with yeah. regularly at work and kind of, you know, come to terms with it. Uh, not accept it, but just come to terms with it. Yeah. I mean, I will say, I love that I was like, do you get into the most hardcore hobbies? And you were like, ah, eh, kind of. I mean, just ultra marathons. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <laughs> um, well, you know, it's... Uh, I guess it's hardcore. I mean, you know, you, you learn r- doing these types of runs that, uh, you know, your your mind quits before your body. So I, I really, I don't know that it's, it's hardcore mentally, I guess, not so much physically, because what you find is you can always go farther. Uh, we're going to have to stop it right there, people. We got other shows coming up on the air here at speaker.com. We'll pick this up later tonight. Uh, it is the start of the weekend, but 
If you did tune in, thank you. If you have not and you're going to catch it later, again, thank you. I hope you guys enjoyed. And for everybody here, with, uh, for Diane and uh, for me and everybody around, thank you for joining us. Thank you for tuning in at speaker.com, iHeartRadio, on Amazon, the Alexa device. Uh, appreciate it. If there's anybody that wishes to contact me and answer some of the questions, like will Trump get elected for a second term, feel free at bdhammond45 at gmail.com or 210-850-3764 or 210-708-8701 anytime, or you can send a text to either phone number. They're both cellular phones. Thank you again. Good Friday. Have a great day. Be safe, and we'll... we'll be back here at the same channel, the same bat time, whatever the whatever term suits you better. Have an awesome day. Looking forward to spending a little more time with you later. Good, goodbye.